Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the March 28th episode of Wine is the New Tea. How y'all doing today? Great. How you doing? I'm doing incredible. Uh-huh. We are joined today with the infamous Polo and the plainest Jane. Guys, say hello to the people. What's up? What's going on, y'all, Winos? Let's get ready for a good show. Get yes, honey. We got, we got a lot of topics we're going to get into today. I mean... Boy, 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 what a time to be alive. I mean, I, apparently they want these episodes of Wine is the New Tea to keep rolling out because the people are giving us things to keep discussing, coming back to you day after day. Honestly, we can run this show five days a week with all this going on. We're going to get into okay. <laughs> this ditty thing, you oh. know, all the different elements. Honestly, we can run one whole episode alone just off of this saga, but we also got some breaking news on J-Hud and Common. Um, we're going to get into, you know, just some more details about what's going on in Baltimore. Um, we're joined here today with the plaintiff, Jane. She's actually in Baltimore right now. And before we get into those other topics, would you like to give us some insight on what's going on in Baltimore? Uh, it's a really tragic situation what has happened to the Francis Key Bridge here in the Baltimore area. It's definitely affected our city and our people. Um, it, it, it has caused a lot of really interesting discourse. I can be honest, the latest update that I have is that they have recovered two. There were two who were actually rescued and pulled from the water who they were on the bridge and present at the time. And um, then there were between six to eight that were unaccounted for where they found two more bodies. And obviously because it was days later and they were submerged in water, um, the they were presumed deceased and, and they are. So they did find two more bodies in two vehicles in the water. Um, it's just a really unfortunate time for us. Traffic on the Beltway has always been a struggle for us. I feel like it's a good kept secret. Um, I don't think it compares to the discourse that people have about like Atlanta traffic, but on our Beltway 695, 95, 70, it's always either traffic or construction. And it's it's been going on for like well over 20 years. It always, the running joke here in Baltimore is that the the construction on the Beltway is just, is never going to be done. The pothole on the Beltway, like it's just never. And this is really just going to add an additional hiccup or delay towards what we have going on travel wise since we won't be able to utilize that bridge obviously it's going to take a long time to recover from the sentimental loss of life and and everything that happened within that catastrophe but but also the planning the mapping out and the rebuilding of that bridge is going to take something a lot of people have jumped into conspiracy theories a lot of people they're like you know it was planned it was an organized attack it was this that and the third and i mean If you want to talk about the conspiracies, okay. Um, I feel like first we really need to handle and prioritize and and be empathetic to the loss of life that occurred there because they were able to get all of the civilians evacuated from the bridge. But there were some actual people who were working doing maintenance, construction workers crew working on that bridge. And those are the ones who went into the water so it's a really unfortunate situation it can become a bit of a heated debate depending on who you talk to in the baltimore area because again if they feel like it was planned and it wasn't an accident they're more focused on that than anything but it's definitely devastating and kind of like a local more contained version of all, all I can really compare it to when I saw it, because I was in such shock and disbelief, was like how I felt during 9-11. And that, obviously, yeah. that was so long ago. And obviously, not as many people were affected, but still people were, and there were lives lost. And watching that footage was eerie, because it looked like you were watching a movie. Like, Can I ask you something? Um, does Do you look at it as... Um... You know, a tragedy, a, a, a cargo ship, you know, hit the bridge. Or do you also look at it as kind of like a lack of maintenance and proper upkeep of the bridge, you know, by the, the government in Baltimore? How do you look at this scenario? Well, it was definitely an older bridge. So I think that um, the bridge was definitely built a while ago. So I, I, I they were on there to repair parts of the bridge to begin with. So clearly the infrastructure needed some work. Um, should they have shut it down prior to if they knew it was that fragile, who could really anticipate 
or predict that a ship would hit it and make it go yeah. down. But there have been plenty of times where you would, we, you would think that would be one of the things they would be considering <laughs> in the design of it. Like, oh, like that's the first thing we should have thought. Right, about. right, so right. As time goes on, infrastructure it, it continues to get. So you need to update it. If it was a bridge that was constructed back in the '60s or '70s, obviously based on today's standard, things need to be a bit different. But there have been plenty of times we've been on that bridge and the wind was blowing and we kind of felt ways and it makes us nervous and we we've always held our our breath going across that bridge to be honest right. but i can't say the other right. aren't like that either so i don't know if that's specific to baltimore and thank Maybe. god the time of morning that it happened which was not a high traffic time that's all right. i keep thinking about it was in the wee hours of the morning and i was like see that's god right there yeah it's, it's, it's feeling like one of the scenarios where god you know sacrificed you know five to ten to save hundreds you know what yes, i'm saying yes, yes. yes. it was 1 30 in the morning so yeah. Yeah. So the thing with me when it comes to that situation, I'm I think my question has been, did nobody see the ship coming towards you know the the, the bridge to, to to evacuate? I know they said they were already having limited amount of traffic on it because like y'all said they were working on it. But it looks like the ship was just slowly moving towards it. Did they not think it was gonna collapse or I think Maybe that's been my question. Yeah, like, did they think it was going to stop? They, I felt like it looks as if they just watched it, hit it. And I'm like, why didn't they just completely stop it? If they had already been getting calls that the other boat, um, the power kept going out, why wasn't this bridge completely shut down until that got situated or even, you know, the bridge getting finished? I think the whole thing is unfortunate, but that's been my question. Why well, did they not? I think, well... Number one, it's hard to stop a ship. You think about the Titanic, right, right, right. that iceberg, miles away, but it takes a lot to stop a Brit, a, a ship. Like it yeah. takes a lot, and they were calling May Day, but I think it's one of those situations mm. where, like, a nine one one operator has to deal with catastrophic calls all day. Right. But people who are on the airwaves, really directing, you know, ship, depending on what type of travel, ship, air, whatever. Um, if they're not prepared for a catastrophe like that, yeah, because they've never experienced one because it doesn't right. happen often. How often right. do ships crash yeah. into bridges? Like that's not a <laughs> not often at all. Thing. So yeah. I, I hope this is just, just a wake up call for not just the city of Baltimore, but you know, for all cities, yeah. especially major port cities, to reinforce you know their bridges, their transportation. You know, we don't want to have to wait into a second or third <laughs> incident. You know. Um, my prayers do go out to people in Baltimore, you know, especially you. I hope nobody close to you is affected, Jane. Um, on April 14th, Tasha K will be live on stage at the Baltimore Comedy Club, you know, bringing some comedic relief to the city at a time that it needs it most. So you guys can head on over to TashaKOnStage.com. You can check out her tour dates. You can get tickets there. And, you know, hopefully she brings some love and laughter into such a tragic time. We're going to go into a quick commercial break. And then after that, we're going to be returning with some news on j -Hud. Um, and then also later on in the show, we're going to keep following that Diddy story that keeps unfolding. We're going to discuss a lot of the people, celebrities that have been named in the official court documents. And, you know, we're just going to lighten this show up again. Prayers out to Baltimore. We'll be back to you after this commercial break. Brown's Blinos. Okay, Miss Tina Brown. Tina Brown. Okay, Shane Brown. You ready? Yeah, ready. Now, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I love Bobby Brown. You and Bobby, how close were y'all? Very close. What was it like living with Whitney? It was fun. You smoke crack with Whitney, you said? That's pretty. Absolutely. You don't know that? We only know Bobby and Whitney. Girl. And every time he's sitting down, he talking about Whitney. And I'm like, how as a new wife do you deal with this? Like, That's why I hit that bitch with a bottle. And it dwindled down to, it dwindled down. you know, some people it that's- It dwindled down to my brother touching <laughs> three of my daughters. Who, Bobby? Yes. Sure, but. Yes. But, you know. Yes. I'm, 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 just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't hold it no more. shows like this and would like to see more with me on stage in your city well i'm coming tickets on sale right now link in the description box as well as the bio hurry up now while tickets last okay <laughs> and 
And we are back. Hello, everybody. How you doing? I hope you enjoyed those commercials. Mm -hmm. You can now find more in-depth content like this over at TashaKLive.com. Also, check out that app. She's quietly coming for Netflix. You know, you might be thinking she has just the tea, but she also has some very fresh content, some original movies, and, you know, some series popping off. So, you know, head on over to her website and her app. And, yeah, check out some more. Okay, guys, let's get into some of these topics. Do it. Okay. On the latest episode of Club Shay Shay, our boy Offset appeared. And told Big Shay Shay that, man, your pants too tight, okay? You got too many muscles to be wearing that. You out here stacked. What you? What are your thoughts on um, uh, Offset keeping it real with Shannon Sharp? Polo, take it away. Look, I agree with Offset. <laughs> Shannon, you too damn big to be wearing them tight clothes. And it's, it's more than just the clothes. We already suspecting about the sexuality. Then you got the tight clothes. The walk is something that he was born with, but I'm sorry. We're judging you off the walk, too. And you isn't got it too interesting many questionable how things going on, Shannon. I he went right this. into defending his sexuality just because Offset <laughs> said his pants is tight. And yeah. he's like, what, what got to do with the other, Shannon? Look, Shannon trying to tell us something without telling us something. That's it. <laughs> We know what it is. We know what it is. Shannon want to show off the shape. Shannon want to show off his curves and his figure too. He's just like, and I think he looked great, honey. I I really do. <laughs> like you know, personally, I love me in that age, honey. And you know, yeah. especially one that's in shape. So I mean, if he was playing on my <laughs> team, honey, I would have shot my shot. But I don't think he want what I'm selling. Uh, Plenty <laughs> Jane, what are your thoughts about Mr. Shay Shay? Um, you know what? I can't do anything but respect Offset for giving him that younger perspective in a in a respectful way. Because a lot of us have been saying, like, why is this jiggaboo in these tight clothes? Like, it's giving Terry, jiggaboo! it's giving Terry Crews from White Chicks. Like, yeah. it's giving, like, okay. make his chest muscles jump. I just know it. I I know he. <laughs> I just know he absolutely can. Like, it, it's. Yeah. it's, it's <laughs> Um, I think that, and, and Offset really has an eye for fashion anyway, man or woman. Because I remember he went on that, yes, that white is. girl, Bobby's podcast. She's got yeah. that similar interview style with Funny Marco. Yeah, and she just like, real, like, monotone. Yeah, like, what do you think about what I have on? And he was like, yeah, that don't go. Why would you put that on? <laughs> like, like, he always going to be honest with you about yeah. what she's wearing. As far as Shannon defending his sexuality, I feel like, I feel like there's a disconnect between what the that those two generations how wh whatever year he was born they yeah, just don't say nothing about who the man was sleeping with he just said oh your pants too tight that's true but honestly i can say a lot of the jokes online in every comment section that posted him outside of that wine and spirit store in that green outfit Boy. and the parody every one of them comment sections had a flag in it they was all oh, he part of the zesty yeah he part, like, like the, honestly that's that's what 80 i mean baby the them pants were so them pants so tight i could see a sperm count <laughs> if it looked like a duck quack like a duck <laughs> it's a duck like, <laughs> that's what it was given like that's what we was that's what a lot of the jokes were like on yeah. like so i can see him kind of feeling like he can come back black twitter when, when the general consensus is that he a little zesty but honestly he's got to understand another thing offset talked about in that interview was like you can't take the bait to whatever the public is saying about you especially when you're a public figure like because you're not going to win like these people got endless time to do this you got stuff to do so i understand him defending his section but at some point he got to stop yeah. Like he's got especially stop. if we just said japan like chill on the spandex we didn't say chill on <laughs> The men, we didn't say it's that. Like culture, boys, man. It's like you can't let because then they gonna put you in that old head bracket that ain't cool. See, old head bracket is only not. It's not because of age. It's because you're not culturally involved in the youth. Okay. They call you got me. a lot of young cats rocking you, bro. Rockin I they do. Bro. They do, man. They do, bro, they like you too. They rock with you, bro. Okay. All right. I guess I'm. You got. You got to stop wearing them tight pants too. No, I can't do that. No. Yes, you, you got to, bro. I'm, no. I'm trying to tell you like Hell a player. Nah. I'm trying to tell you like a player. I ain't been letting them change me, man. It ain't about that, bro. It's just you big. I know. You too big for that, bro. Nah, but see, you see, if I got on if I got on big clothes, they might Yeah, you got to wear big clothes, but you. I got on these big cargoes. Okay, these fit. But when I got on, when I got, what you call them? Uh, when I'm out doing stuff for, for my Laportier, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be comfortable. 
You can be comfortable in I I'm uncomfortable in that. I ain't uncomfortable in that. I'm comfortable <laughs> in what I got. <laughs> And see, that's how we know Shannon is a little far removed because he thought that them cargo pants were big. That's how he described them. Maybe they had a little more space than your spandex, but them weren't no big cargo pants. Like, it's going to take but a while to really. What's interesting is I don't even feel like his age bracket and tight pants go together because, honey, men, <laughs> I be dating men that age and then I have to take them to a tailor to show them the European cut. They want to be out here popping in zoop suits with drop crotches and stuff. So it's like, I don't know where his tight pants and his age came from. That's just my <laughs> They don't go together at all. <laughs> uh, Paulo, let me ask you something. I noticed that our guy uh, offset, by the way, I'm from Georgia. Uh, you know, he's, he's he, he puts on for us very well. Uh, two two out of the th three of the Migos are actually from Athens, Georgia, not Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, little do people know. So, like, you know, ring near and dear to my heart. Um, big Offset fan. Big fan of everybody out the South, you know. Uh, but, Polo, I want to point out that our, our guy, he on some Hollywood shit right now. He got on a Balenciaga hoodie. Uh, knowing the temperature with Balenciaga, I found that an interesting choice. What do you What do you feel about his choice in fashion, Polo? I'm, okay, I'm not gonna lie. I, I I feel like I do understand the whole scandal that Balenciaga has around their name, but the clothes is fire. It I'm was sorry. fresh. It would look like tech. I it said, was Ooh, fresh. That's gonna sell out. <laughs> it was fresh and clean. The it was fresh. Was I ain't gonna hold you. I'm sorry. I still got to swipe my card for it. We can talk about that on the internet. <laughs> I'm still swiping my card. How much, ma'am? Oh, here you go. I'm sorry. So I you say it. you say if it's fresh, it's fresh. If it's fresh, it's fresh. God damn it, I need it. <laughs> we can talk about what they did after. <laughs> uh, it's, it's giving very much separate the man from the music. Doesn't matter what it. Is. Okay. Right. okay. Well, I, I just can't. I definitely went down the rabbit stuff. hole. I went down the rabbit hole on some Diddy classics this morning, and I can't lie. No one was going on. I was still did bobbing like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> look, I was just at a party. They still was jamming R. Kelly. To everybody getting up, live stepping, stepping in the name of love. They don't care. They just be woke on social media. <laughs> yeah, I got a best friend. She is my girl. I love her to death. She literally listens to Tory Lanez like she doing drugs undercover. Like she. But and she and she's the biggest fan of Tori still undercover and the way she act when she listens to his music like she's sneaking it's the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> and by the way, guys, we still gonna get into that Diddy T. Uh, but first, I want to talk about how wearing on the street is our girl Jennifer Hudson in common. Our split. The streets are saying that J Hud has ducked. Common because he's for the streets. What are your thoughts, Polo? Listen, they say he's a cheater. I, I, they say he's a cheater, and Jennifer knew that before. <laughs> he cheated on the last one, and he gonna cheat on the next one. My oh. thing with Jennifer, I just want Jennifer to keep one man. Mm -hmm. Just one. Just one man, and I really thought it was gonna be Common, but it's not Common. They say Common out here sticking his thing in everything but Jennifer. So, hey, Jennifer, if that's why, you got to get off. But please, find one and stick one. Maybe we need to figure out, is it something that Jennifer's doing wrong? Is it something that maybe she's not giving them in? Because every man is stepping out. Every man, what's the problem? So I'm Jennifer, not understanding. Jennifer Hudson is an EGOT winner. Do you, is what it that, that she's uh, uh, dating <laughs> below her, 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 her bracket? Like, she really should be going for the best of the best. And maybe we got top-tier woman dealing with Dusties. It, it, you know, that could be the issue, yeah. too. What are your thoughts, Plain and Shay? Okay, so to answer your question about what is an EGOT winner, that is somebody who is decorated enough to have won an Emmy, a, grammar, mm -hmm. a, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony, which is a it's a very high-level achievement. Even right. One right. of those things, but to get all four is like, there's not a whole bunch of people who... So that's one thing. But as far as trying to paint it out like Jennifer did, I feel like the only thing Jennifer did wrong in this aspect of the breakup of the, the severance of their relationship is thinking that Carmen would be different. It doesn't mean that Jennifer did anything wrong. She thought that he was going to be different to her as opposed to really looking at his pattern and how he treats women. It's easy to laugh at Tiffany Haddish and say, Tiffany, girl, you thought that it was going to last with you in common. 
You because she's a nutcase, right? She yeah. like, it's not gonna last with Tiffany and anyone, sweetheart. So there's that. <laughs> That's the thing. So if if you think there's you that. might one up on Tiffany because you're not as much of a, a a nutcase or not as painted the way that she's painted in the media. Yeah, you might think, oh, I can get a man that she had and be able to keep him. But really, you chuckling at how he treated her ended up being how he treated you. And right. I don't think that there's anything wrong with a why can't a man stay with Jennifer? Mm -hmm. She decided to leave because she felt like she wasn't being treated correctly. And I think we need to leave space and give space for women to have autonomy to leave relationships that are not benefiting them, that are harmful. Absolutely. So I don't really feel like it's a matter of... Uh, Dang! Why did she say? Why yeah. can't she keep him? No, drop them. If 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 he's not benefiting your soul, your spirit, he's not respecting your boundaries and and what you lay down that you are and aren't going to tolerate in a relationship. Then then drop them, and that shouldn't be necessarily looked at as as a bad thing. Because like, I, I agree. I agree. Let me touch on that. I agree with that. I do agree that I'm big on drop that zero, get that hero. Yeah. When I said that, I'm saying it as in a lot of times we ignore those signs at the beginning. We ignore a lot of the red flags at the beginning and we still pursue the relationship. We're still mm -hmm. telling everybody about the relationship. I now call it platinum P syndrome. They think they P is so platinum that they're going to change the behavior just like Simon and Portia. Simon has done <coughs> everything and, and, and to, this, he's doing yeah. the Portia to everybody else, but these women think that they cat so golden they can change these men's patterns and they get humbled every time. And so that's that's all I'm saying is is like all of this could have been avoided. We should we wouldn't even be sitting here talking about it if she probably would have paid attention to a lot of those red flags at the beginning before they publicized it. Like they just recently went public as well. And then I'm like, and now the breakup is here. I'm like, you could have avoided this. I'm sure you saw red flags well before this. So I, I, I again I agree with what y'all saying. The but I'm just though, saying, how many times do you have to go through stuff like this? Yeah publicly before you say okay enough is enough let me figure out i'm doing something wrong this can't keep happening you know not red, publicly for sure red flags look like six flags when you're having fun and when you're in this blissful land and, and I guess what? That's what it was jennifer hudson reached this level of commercial success being on daytime tv as much as i don't like we like we don't watch it a whole bunch but it's still a certain level of success where she feels like how could somebody do me wrong when I'm when I'm all the way here? She's an ego. Exactly. She's on daytime TV. I would think that her ratings would be down, but sometimes they aren't. I mean, they're better than Sherry Shepherd's, but right. nobody's replacing Wendy. So I think that she right. really thought that that public whatever was gonna be something, and now she's kind of either eating crow or this is associated with this commercialized level of success that Jennifer Hudson has. The breakup has got to. It stings a bit when everybody sees it, as opposed to you dealing with a, a quiet breakup behind closed doors. Yeah, I don't. Polo, it, let's say Common had been the the highest vibrational version of himself. Okay. Did, did they still have the potential to be a power couple in the first place? Or I don't think been? so. I personally don't think so. I don't think they align. Um, and that's just me and my opinion. But I don't think that Jennifer Hudson and Common align. Like it doesn't, right. it doesn't even seem like they match to me. Even trying to think about them being sexual, it, it give me awkward vibes. Like, oh, uh, I just, I can't. It just don't, it don't help get me that. But I right. personally think that. What about you? Mm, I asked the question because you already know how I felt. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna, I wanna ask that question if I felt like they had it, honey. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really Dang. see chemistry wise they don't really make a whole bunch of sense but hey if you, it's just saying well, I don't think the Jonathan Majors and Megan Good have chemistry but that's just what we're seeing from the outside looking and making assumptions yeah. they definitely look so awkward like what I think it is is like clearly look at that big he just he's he's throwing her against the wall and, and, and knocking that thing out the frame. That's all that's going on with Megan and Jonathan. <laughs> you know. Um, clear. I don't know Especially what they got going on. When you didn't have church boy, you know, he probably was tapping her ever so slightly. And sometimes we just need to get break the fuck down. So we see we see what Megan got going on over there. Well, uh speaking of power couples, potential power couples. Uh, <sighs> Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we got Charles and Netta. <laughs> yes! Yeah, it's not a power year. couple. I'm crying. They have officially signed on and joined the cast of Love and Hip Hop. Um, I'm 
beyond speechless. I knew something was going on uh, when I started seeing a lot of the cast members at their wedding uh, yes. that came out of That's nowhere. Uh, def definitely like, saw okay. Amy Luciani. She was slaying there. And I'm just like, what? Now, how did this happen? Polo, what are your thoughts about Charles and Netta, of all people? They don't got no love nor any hip-hop, but they signed on to the cast. What are your thoughts, baby? <laughs> so, <laughs> Charles and Miss Netta said, listen, we the social media icons of the year. They taking it all. But you know what? Listen, I don't blame Charles and Netta. I blame love and hip-hop. <laughs> mm. I don't blame Charles and Netta because I would do the same thing if I was Charles and Netta. I think Love and Hip Hop, they out of line. They trying to get people to laugh at these people. Uh, they want to see Miss Netta up there cooking that fried chicken and smothering pork chops for Charles. They, I think that it's a mess. They're just trying to get ratings. What in the good Lord name does Charles and Netta have to do with Love and Hip Hop? No, Please. seriously. I think they definitely gonna be shady and catch Miss Netta without her makeup. Um, which they catch anybody without their anybody. makeup on these type of shows. So it's like <laughs> that that I mean uh, honestly, whether Netta got the makeup on or not, it's really still gonna look the way it looks. <laughs> they still be doing wonders when they post still pictures. You be like, Oh, you thinking the skin cleared up. It was not, it was editing, it was Photoshop. <laughs> like it was not so whether you catch Charles uh, Netta with the makeup or not, it was just like you know the nudes when we saw the BBL and we saw the, the butt. The butt was poking, but it also looked like a granola ball. Or <laughs> the butt was, it was bumpy. just as bumpy as the face, like so. The bumpy roll. Now that was a roller coaster. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not gonna make a difference. You know what's so crazy? I I, I don't blame Charles and Netta, and I also don't blame Love and Hip Hop. What I want to blame and halfway congratulate because I'm impressed yeah. with the work that their manager is putting in. Yeah, yes. Charles and Netta manager is putting in, getting them all of these bookings. Getting them all of these sponsorships. All, every time you go to their page, they at a restaurant, and you can tell they're reading the script. Oh, yeah. this, these chicken wings, and oh, this was good. I'm like, you know what? You are to blame, but I'm impressed because if you can market them, baby, you can market anything. Yeah, did y'all see? Did y'all see Miss? This what? Like you can't make this shit up. Miss <laughs> Netta had a, a luxury bag unboxing oh, on God. her live. And baby, what I say, she, I mean, it's real nasty work to do a live unboxing of swap meat bags. I, I mean, she went I was like, these are seat. clearly <laughs> fake purses, and you got the nerve to get on. Like, what's going on? Did y'all see that? She went yeah. straight to Canal Street, and got then some bags, was saying the box I know y'all might be mad. Y'all maybe y'all hating for the like girl hating over flea market pocketbooks. Like that bag was thirty dollars. <laughs> no, not even. Yeah, it, it was oh, that is I, crazy, but I did see that. That is uh, a mess. I said Miss Netta and Charles. Listen, they're gonna juice this all the way up, and I don't blame them. That's I what I was about to say. I think that Zeus has lowered the bar. It's bad enough that we don't even watch like Love and Hip Hop like that no more. Right. It was something back in the Atlanta days when you had, you know, um, the classic Stevie and 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 then Jocelyn came into the picture, or even back when Jim Jones was on it. But it it, it got to the point where I think Zeus has really lowered the bar. Like they really belong on Zeus. They don't belong on on Love and Hip Hop. They don't. But I guess. At this point, Love & Hip Hop is truly competing with Zeus or, or Tubi-like stuff. It's really unfortunate that anybody in their mom... I, I thought it was weird when Erica Banks went on Love & Hip Hop, let alone Charles and Netta. Like, it's 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 really just a sad day and age for reality TV. And they had another reality show that they worked on with another network, but I guess they got that Love & Hip Hop check and said deuces because I haven't heard nothing about they was gonna make that reality show in, in, in the shack out there uh, with the chicken and the pork chops. <laughs> you, you guys, we're gonna go into a quick commercial break and then we're gonna come back with some more tea on Diddy and that continuous saga. Brown's Blinos. Hey, Miss Tina Brown. Tina Brown. Okay, Shane Brown. You ready? Yeah, ready? Now, I ain't gonna lie, like, I love Bobby Brown. You and Bobby, how close were y'all? Very close. What was it like living with Whitney? It was fun. You smoke crack with Whitney, you said? That's Absolutely. pretty. Absolutely. You don't know that? We only know Bobby and Whitney. Girl. And every time he's sitting down, he talking about Whitney. 
And I'm like, how as a new wife do you deal with this? Like, That's why I hit that bitch with a bottle. And it dwindled down to, it dwindled down. you know, some people that dwindled down to my brother touching <laughs> three of my dudes. Who? Bobby? Yes. Sure, but. Yes. But, you know. Yes. I'm, 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 just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't hold it no more. shows like this and would like to see more with me on stage in your city well i'm coming tickets on sale right now link in the description box as well as the bio hurry up now while tickets last okay <laughs> and we are back wow what what a riveting interview <laughs> you know tasha has like some really soul story interviews that she does a lot of time her dropping the t is what gets the most you know traction um, but you know, you can check out more stuff like that over at TashaKLive.com. You can also download the Tasha K Live app and get into these interviews. It just gives you a, a lot more insight on things that you would have never like wrapped your head around. Um, we got some exclusives when it comes to this Diddy thing. Um, but we need you guys to get on over here every Tuesday and every Thursday and gather around, come on in the room so we can make sure you know that we are all present when we drop these bombshells. We're going to let this same type of, you know, material circulate on the rest of these blogs. And I think that we might wait till we get closer to a conviction to drop this bombshell. But just know we have the exclusive over here at Unwind Studios by Unwind with Tasha K. Um, Polo G. What's up? Speaking of love and hip hop, like we were talking about before the break, uh, I need to ask you something about our girl Bambi. Ah, uh, mm, do mm, you mm. consider Miss Bambi Hollywood? And also, what do you think her age is? Okay, so what she, you know, what do you think? <laughs> what we got going? I, on? I, I, I consider her. Hollywood because she pulling Hollywood ish. What you mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, she going deeper than Hollywood. You know, with Hollywood, they gonna lie to us. You know, Hollywood is I'm gonna make you believe what you want to see. I mean, what I want you to see. She is lying to the bone. She's going home lying to the husband about the age. And so yeah. I think um, before that age, I mean, before her age came out, I ain't gonna lie. I thought she was about between 43 and 45. I did think she was in there. But when I heard that she was saying she was 38, I was like, well, damn. I've been watching Love and Hip Hop. I'm 28. I've been watching Love and Hip Hop since I was at least 14. So I'm confused. Uh, the math ain't mathed. And right. so, yeah, I think she is, uh, I definitely think she's about her age, 40, 43, 44, 45. But she looks good, though. I would not ever say that. She looks amazing. She's a beautiful woman. Um, I just think she's out of line for lying to her husband about her age. And then she lied. He didn't find out to the third baby how old she really was. But how so, do you marry somebody without... See, no, like, again, what's going on with these other relationships? I just don't understand how these people are getting into these marriages and, and not knowing who they're marrying. Like They're not. they not. They're not really what are your married. thoughts? You know what? I have thoughts, but before I get into my thoughts, my thoughts will play into the clip that we have. Let's hear the clip. I don't know who Shawda really was. I just stayed quiet. I, I shed my tears because I was like, dang, I ain't know that shit really exists that people lie about who they are. I ain't know that I ain't know that really exists. I thought that was like and married people and, and that shit like I seen that shit on movies, mama. I seen that on movies. I seen that shit on movies. So yeah, I get mad when I think about that shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how you go into a whole relationship and then you you ask people like you sitting around family members and they tell they that you can hear the shit. They having stories and shit. And I'm like, damn, well, if we the same age. Like she she was like a mature four year old because I was I ain't know about none of that shit when I was four. You feel so me? So how did you find I, out that she was lying to you about her age? How did you find out? Because the world want to know. Man. how Man, man, for one, it was the second. Zala was already here, and we was on our third anniversary. We was in Jamaica, and we know it was it was COVID still. Mm -hmm. And the lady asked me my information. I had my mask on. I said, I said my information. Then they asked her her information, and she said it with the the ID that I seen that that said eighty four like my birthday. 
yeah well i ain't know it was fake so when she said it the lady said excuse me and what, what i seen was the lady was just really saying like she didn't understand her because she had the mask on but mm -hmm. i guess she thought the lady knew something and she said the real when she said 1981 and i was like i was like whoa so i had my mask on i just turned my head to the side i was like what the okay so and it seems like it seems like mama d just can't wait till like everything to bambi. Fall dry. So everything that happened with bambi mama d taking she it too it's it's really corny to me right so number yeah. one lying about your age lying to your husband is it is it you know despicable yeah but is it worth really pulling your mo your mother up on the internet on instagram live your mother up on the internet and having endless conversations and then your mother made a music video about it it's just crazy to me it's crazy at the end of the day bambi lied about her age by not a decade a couple of years but it was believable black don't crack right approves that it was believable nobody knew Nobody knew, right? So also we have to understand that women's our relationship to our age, mm -hmm. if, especially if you're in the in the industry of entertainment, whether it be music, reality TV, regular TV, whatever the case is, sometimes they do discard us based on our age. So it is very normal for women to lie about their age in the industry. I'm not excusing lying to Scrappy, but these having public conversations in a a, a, yeah. a public mama, mama, I know she was lying about her age. Or, like on Instagram Live, it's childish to me. Like, at what point is your mother gonna get out of your business? Like, it gives it's, very it's much definitely given never because they're all old at this point. This is what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And no. honestly, I never understood, you know, especially like living out here in LA. I, I see it all the time. I don't know what people think is the personal gain in lying about your age. It's like I, I feel like when you're looking a certain way and you're performing a certain way at a certain age, that's a flex. Like I've always felt that way. So I mean, please, Polo, you know, you, you you've been you've been running uh, media entertainment for quite some time. Can you tell yeah. us what the benefit of lying about your age could be? So I think the only benefit is is a lot of people feel like they don't want to be like no one wants to have that old look on them. No one wants to have that oldness on them. You know, yeah. people throw that out quick. Once you turn thirty, you old, and, and, and let the media tell you once you turn thirty. You old. And ain't that young, honey? And, and that's like... young. So imagine her. I think this is the problem, and I'm sorry, I got to be real, y'all. This is the problem. It's not the fact that it was only a, only a couple of years. It's not the fact of none of that. It's the fact that she lied to her husband. Not only that, she showed him fake IDs. She literally she showed really him went fake in, IDs. Huh? That's ridiculous. I don't care how good she looked. I don't care about black not cracking. She was out of line. That's something like you would leave somebody for almost. That's just as bad as cheating. You a lot of me about something like that. You a lot of me about anything. Anything. You lied about your age to me. And I'm who you married, who you took your vows with. To me, is no like nothing to me can make that make sense. But and as far as business wise and in this industry, yes, I'm sorry. They want the younger people. So if you 43 and you lie and say you're 38, they gonna get the 38 year old over the 43 year old. And that's unfortunate that this industry has made it that way because a lot of a lot of the best people are in their late 30s, early 40s, hell, some 50s. So, yeah. you know, it just depends, but I definitely- And it also like though, you, so, you know, I love to find the positives in anything. It's yeah. like, okay, we finding out this lady is a lot older than she says she are, she is, but guess what? We also just see her knock out three babies back to back. That is a very impressive geriatric yeah. pregnancy. Uh, that, wow, I'm impressed. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and when it comes to Mama D, uh, Mama D didn't want to got a whole private investigator. She's well overly invested. I think she wants to end Bambi. For whatever reason, I don't know why. And every one of his girlfriends because <laughs> she she feels like that is her man. Yeah. Like, that's but, no, she's mean. going super hard on Bambi. Like she, she just did a live yesterday. And she said she got a pro she paid a private investigator thousands to find out information on this girl and to follow her. And where the hell Mama D get money to do that anyway? Listen, the same place she got to get that body done, the face reconstructed, teeth done. She, I think Listen. she look kind of good. <laughs> Trust me, love hip hop. Her look a mess. There's no yeah. reason for a black woman to go get Kylie Jenner 
lips. Well, how do you remember though? Mama D came on the scene looking like Vampire in Brooklyn. <laughs> so Mama D came on the scene. There's one photo with Mama D and Scrappy, and she literally looks like Kelly Rowland. She had the short red Mama D. Oh, I, yes. yeah, I know you're talking yes. about her back in the day. She really she didn't look bad. Like she didn't yeah. have to do all of that. She could have just aged. Well, that was in before the alcohol and the drugs. I'm dead. Oh, that life comes at you fast. Yeah, that was in 06. But I know she had, it was like the red and black little Kelly Rowland look. I remember that because I posted it and said Kelly Rowland and Scrappy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at first well, glance, you really might believe that. Well, while yeah. Mama D is overly protective of her son, little Scrappy, and needs to get out his business, it yeah. appears that Snoop Dogg needs to be a little more protective and get into his daughter's business a little more. Um, she humbly <clears throat> expressed to the internet recently that she is pushing a Toyota, um, amongst other things. And I don't know. I actually, I have like mixed feelings about this. Yeah, uh, me too. Snoop Dogg is not just a millionaire. He's a multimillionaire. He's been around for a long time, but at the same time, there are some Toyotas that are nice Toyotas. All Lexuses are upgraded Toyota. Yeah. Um, Polo, what are your thoughts about this recent revelation? So I think definitely, um, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm like you. I have mixed feelings. I'm like, eh, you know, like Toyota Corolla. I get it. You want your kids to be humble. You want them to be able to afford it. But at the same time, like we're in a social media era. These people are seen outside. You know, they're more likely to be targeted if they are in regular cars. Like, now people want to bother them. People want to yeah. come towards you. People want to. So I feel like for him knowing that his daughter is in the public light, she should have had something a little more secure, maybe a little more laid back. But I get it. You want your kids to be humble. That really wasn't the part that got to me. It was the part where she said she has days where she hungry. She, she, she's trying to figure out how she's going to eat. That's the part that got me. Because if my dad is a multimillionaire... And there are days that I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna eat. That's kind of wild to me. Do but, do you but do you believe just because people say stuff with conviction doesn't yeah, mean I believe it's it. true? Do I believe, you believe it. it. I believe it because Shaq what? is the same way, and a lot of parents are the same way. A lot of rich parents are the same way. They believe, and I get it. It's your money. That's your life. They want their kids to get it. But I think it may be with her. I'm pretty sure he didn't know that she's out there hungry. But you know, like you, all she had to do was ask. All she had to do was maybe, ask. Of maybe course. she made it want to make it seem like her and that new man that she just got married <laughs> to was all good, and then you know, look up. Damn, I'm hungry. I can't take it no more. And like, damn, why you didn't say that? You made it seem like little light skin was holding you down, baby. All you had to do was call daddy. And that. What'd you think, Jay? <laughs> I, I have thoughts, but we also have a clip for this one. I would like to play the clip to get her her exact words, and then say how I feel. Okay. matter because my dad is rich and because I have this and I have that when that shit don't mean nothing to me like I drive a Toyota Corolla and I'm content content when my dad bought me that car I, I'm not gonna lie at first I was like hmm a Toyota Corolla mm -hmm. but before that I was driving Wayne's Acura. And you just learn to appreciate stuff. I'm looking on social media. I'm looking at these girls' lives that are that are my age. And I'm like, damn, you doing this? You doing that? And I'm sitting here with my two dogs and my boyfriend every day trying to figure out what I want to eat. Like, I just, I feel stuck. But at the end of the day, I'm very blessed. I'm in a very blessed position. You know what I'm saying? And... So my thought is this, we have a lot of celebrities and a lot of what we are beginning to complain about as a society or as a generation is nepotism and entitled children, mm -hmm, or entitled people in general. And so I think it, it's really interesting when we assess her character as people, I think as a parent and especially as a very rich parent, it goes mm -hmm. without question, Snoop Dogg is very rich. It's your job to assess your child's character to see if they are worthy or deserving of more of whatever you have, mm, more resources that you have access to. She's not sitting up here like, man, my dad should have gave me more. I deserve more. She's like, I'm blessed. I have a little bit, but you know what? I'm grateful for what I have. 
and but she you know, said that but she still took to the internet to say that which is still is giving passive aggressiveness exactly I, 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 I think she said that my, my she has son no can text I think, me we have a problem I think it's a matter of trying to understand what passive aggressive is and, and what's just being honest about what your parents have put you through in general who asked <laughs> is my question every several kids come out we've seen little romeo come out about how he wasn't properly compensated from right. his father um, we see Monique's son most recently. So sometimes really speaking about your truthful experience and you you might feel stuck. She feels stuck. This this could be a message that helps that the everyday people who don't have the access to celebrity or rich parents or an overflow and access of resources. She feels stuck, but she still got to wake up and go to work every day. And she's so grateful for her little putt putt or lemon, as we call it here in Baltimore for her, her her car. Her dad gave her a cheap car. Do I feel like she deserves more? I feel like in a way, if Snoop Dogg cared at all about his kids, the proximity to his his public image, he would have given her a bit more as long as giving her more doesn't contribute to her detriment. How many right. times do we see rich kids who have an access to resources and they end up just down the wrong path? Bobby right. Christina isn't here anymore. Why? Does she ever really have a real job? Or did no. she just drown in the money or what was awarded to her via the resources? And that's why I feel like, especially as a very rich parent, it is your job to kind of see. You're not telling me Snoop Dogg doesn't know that she feels stuck, that she either works at a market or a regular nine to five, and that maybe her using a little bit more money or trying to explore, okay, baby, what are you passionate about? Is it ballet? Is it tap dance? Is it being a producer, how how can I fund additional education or training to help you live a better life? Um, yes. but, you know, every celebrity doesn't feel that way about their their family, their parents, or their kids, and they just leave them starving. You know, Kobe Bryant's father literally just sold one of his championship rings yes. because he's financially struggling. Why didn't Kobe make sure his parents were okay or write something in the stone the way he has something written in for his wife, a person that don't right. even have his same DNA? People have different <laughs> feelings and thoughts about just nepotism and how to allocate their funds when it comes to their family. But right. I feel like this girl looks like she's not entitled. She's not out here trying to wearing fake bags. She's not out here trying to keep up the look of the Instagram baddie, the Instagram model, the typical rapper's daughter, right? She's not trying to keep up with Regine and Lil Wayne's daughter. She's just living her little ordinary life. And she just told us how she right. felt. So yeah, again, I, right. let's say she was sitting down on the interview with Tasha K and then she told all of that. That would make sense to me. But it's like, have you ever seen the memes where they're like, nobody? And then Corey, I drive a Toyota Corolla. Like, no, like who, what triggered you going to the internet? You got your daddy phone number. And that is why I call BS. This seems like passive yeah. aggressiveness. She wanted to expose her daddy. And it's like, oh, y'all think Snoop Dogg, yo, y'all think we just uh, pooping on gold toilets. Let me tell y'all something. I'm over here in the Corolla. My, my daddy ain't with y'all. Like it was giving expose to me. Like I, I, yeah. nobody what? asked. What Snoop Dogg had you pushing? Nobody asked you nothing. Yeah, and that's what yeah. it's about. I, the, I think going to the internet for free versus I, because people had the same critique about Monique's son. He did it on TikTok for free. He didn't mic up and put on his best outfit and make sure his makeup and his haircut was done to make sure he looked the best. He just candidly shared how he felt about his parental relationship or dynamic because that was a trending topic but also keep in mind and he felt dog, triggered snoop dog right it, it, rightfully so but yeah. snoop dog's daughter has also candidly came to the internet before when she was having suicidal ideations yeah. and snoop never showed up for her but you know so you know what this generation is different do we overshare at times Absolutely. But there was something that seemed really authentic and genuine about her sharing and not calling up Good Morning America and Gail yeah. King and NBC and ABC and doing the teary eyed shots with the great cameras. It doesn't but require she all did, that. Though. The internet be <laughs> internetting, be internet. You don't got to sit down with Gail King for everybody that watch Gail King to still see the stuff. Because here we are <laughs> talking about it now. Gail huh? King will be talking about it next week. Exactly. And if you think that people don't watch this show, you are a sadly mistaken playing this day. When I tell you these blogs is press, I have seen them over at Fox Soul addressing things that have been spoken on on this show. They got Jess Hilarious in the Breakfast Club stealing all of Tasha K's sound effects. 
Like these people are watching and, and they are taking notes. Hey, I'm not I'm not saying they're not. I just there's something that she doesn't come off as some type of parental gold digger to I agree, me. I agree at that. Like I and, and I feel like we need to just be more receptive when people are telling the truth about their parents or people who have they've had experiences from. Everybody wants to make it seem like, well, you put it on the internet, so you're optimistic. Like, no, sometimes knowing the truth about Seeing, like, for example, Monique calling everybody else her sweet baby and knowing the relationship with her actual baby is yeah. so fractured, it tells you something about her. So, yeah. she, and you, you might not like every time she say my sweet baby, she's being very condescending, very much so. So, it's like you might feel like her son was being opportunistic, but it very much lets you know a bit about Monique's character. She's passive aggressive as well. So, but the difference is she's rich being passive aggressive. So, oh. Oh, there it is. Well, guys, we definitely have the hottest buzz topic of the week, Diddy, to get into and all the different elements. Honestly, we've, we've almost gone a full hour. We could have spent it all on Diddy. But now we're going to go into a commercial break and we're going to get into uh, Young Miami, what she has been labeled in as the court documents. Other celebrities, uh, including the Georgia Mass Choir, the Clark Central Sisters and T.D. Jakes that have all been listed in these court filings and everything else involving the Diddy saga. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go straight to commercials and then we're gonna get into it. Brown's Blinos, hey. okay, Miss Tina Brown. Tina Brown. Okay, Shane Brown, you ready? Yeah, yeah, ready? Now I ain't gonna lie, like I love Bobby Brown. You and Bobby, how close were y'all? Very close. What was it like living with Whitney? It was fun. You smoke crack with Whitney, you said? That's pretty- Absolutely. You don't know that? We only know Bobby and Whitney. Girl. And every time he's sitting down, he talking about Whitney. And I'm like, how as a new wife do you deal with this? Like That's why I hit that bitch with a bottle. And it dwindled down to, it dwindled down. you know, some people that- It dwindled down to my brother touching three of my toys. Who, Bobby? <laughs> yes. Sure, but. Yes. But, you know. Yes. I'm, I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't hold it no more. All right, winos. If you enjoy shows like this and would like to see more with me on stage in your city, well, I'm coming. Tickets on sale right now. Link in the description box as well as the bio. Hurry up now while tickets last, okay? <laughs> Again, while seeing clips from that interview, just really, it, uh, like it's just it's like so moving, and like she's she, she's shedding tears, and like Tasha really had me on ed on edge watching that. Um, okay. I cannot wait to check out the full interview. You guys can catch that and more uncensored content over at TashaKLive.com. Um, also, again, April fourteenth, Tasha will be performing live on stage at Baltimore Comedy Club. You can go check that out and her. Other other tour date she's coming to a city near you so even if you're not in baltimore don't worry you can indulge in the tasha k experience head on over to tasha k on stage.com check out her full list of tour dates and um yeah you never know you might be seeing one of us joining her on the show as well now the moment that we have all been waiting for because this is unfolding like the biggest saga it's it's it got more parts than you know who the fuck did i marry and trapped in the closet you know combined <laughs> the, the, the amount of elements diddy 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 wow okay so first of all in the court filings the celebrity names that have been listed you know um with his sex trafficking case we have names like stevie jack mm. We have names, oh my God, look at the web. The web Ooh. of celebrities. We have the Clark sisters. We got Prince Harry, T.D. Jakes. The shade of it all, we got Young Miami, but she was not listed underneath celebrity, but she was in the category of sex workers along with the baby mama of 50 Cent. Can somebody please fill me in and let me know how the Georgia Mass Choir is part of a, a sex trafficking scandal? My mind is blown. Paula, what are your thoughts? Oh, my goodness. My mind is blown, too, because I'm trying to figure out how, where, like, how. What is going on? The like, Georgia is, Mass Choir sex trafficking? 
Can somebody like, make it make sense? House, the I'm side, uh, house. Like, what is going on? I am just appalled. I am shocked. They said the clock is TD Jakes. Stevie J, everybody and their mama been in Diddy House at the parties. And I'm still trying to figure out what do these people be doing there? What is the Clark sisters doing at uh, Diddy's house? I want to know. What are they doing over there? <laughs> and it's just the imagery of it all. It's just like, ew. Like, what? Like, what? What, what, what was Diddy James and, and, and Diddy doing? Um, and also, like, can we get into the fact that Young Miami is not only just listed as a sex worker, but she's been listed as a drug mule transporting peak cocaine. Let me tell you something. This case has put me on to so many substances and drugs that I never heard of. Peak cocaine. I'm hearing about <laughs> liquid cocaine. Plain Jane, what are your thoughts? Um, you know, I think a lot has been hidden in plain sight right in front of our faces that we um as a collective, right? Like obviously not as as individuals, just as a collective have turned a blind eye to. Uh, it's really interesting how quiet Carisha Young Miami is right now and how she silently tried to like back up into the bushes like that Simpson. <laughs> like she really tried to quietly back up. But like, no, this this is who you she didn't marry him, but she married her brand with him in order to come up. The city girls were the city girls. And then when she got with Diddy, she felt like Diddy could elevate her her visibility and her access to which it which it certain, is. And and it did. It, it it worked, but what's what are the consequences of that? Exactly. It's where we are right now. It's you know, so you showing up with the go pappy, you taunting people and making joking tweets talking about, oh, if Diddy told you get on your knees and lick my pussy right now, you'd be getting on your knees and you'd be licking my pussy. And, and how would I you, want, and you it, and that hiding in plain sight? That was one a, of the examples. So like you taunting people and joking about stuff like that, you know, two years or so ago, or maybe even just last year on social media, how would you even have a joke with that sort of nuance or undertone that truly directly correlates with what we're watching transpire right now about his ability to abuse power and have people, uh, you know, partake in, in deviant sexual acts? How would you be able to, and now, you know, your, what was it, Carisha Please being on Revolt, ain't seen or heard an episode since things start going down. He's selling shares. Different people are taken up for him. And, you know, it's just really, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. It seems like when there's a black male musician, whether it be between hip hop and R&B, because I'm speaking about R. Kelly and, 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 and Diddy, in which they've been seen in photos together, right? So whatever they said he did, oh, he did that He shit. did. <laughs> but it's like, it said, when, that, it when said you, that R. Kelly made a phone call to WAC 100 to show his support for Diddy. It, it, um, it, is that surprising? But so is Tyrese and so is Stevie J. And it's really interesting how the black media, as soon as you start to hold a black man in music accountable, the first thing they want to say is, and sometimes within regular entertainment, but definitely within music, you, that's why the whole, oh, separate the artist from the, the act or the man from the music or whatever the case is. And it's like, no, this is what helps us put them on a pedestal and idolize them in a certain way that doesn't help. Y'all just trying to tear the black man down. Are we, or are we just holding them accountable? Well, they right. don't need any, we don't need to tear right. them down. And you want to know why they're going to tear themselves down as I'm running back some Diddy bops, which they were, I'm telling you, like, you know, a, a banger is a banger. I <laughs> play bad boys for life. Right. And literally on the uh, unedited version, the very opening line is, I'm the definition of half man, half drugs. And then you have young Miami all perfect. I can't lie. Miami is not a hell of a lyricist. And normally when it's her and JT on the track, JT always take it. But let me tell you, there is one time where Miami had me like, hey, she said, I'll never snitch on you, daddy. I'll hold a brick for She's you, in. daddy. They don't <laughs> need no help with anybody bringing them down. They out here telling on themselves and all of this stuff is aging terribly. Polo, what are your thoughts? And I feel, actually, I feel bad for it because, honestly, the girl, Young Miami, came in the industry. She wasn't hip to this. She didn't understand how it's easy to get yourself caught in somebody else's BS mm -hmm. that's going on. Then he had all this going, look, listen, just hold on, hear me out, Jay, look. Then he had all this going, a majority of this going on 
when Young Miami was a damn baby. Now she didn't came in. He didn't made her a monthly sex worker paying her 250k a month to open that twat. And now she delivering drugs for him. Now they got her in the case. Now you finna catch a charge over this man and who you thought you had a win. The case as a sex worker, not an affiliated celebrity. How damaging worker. is this to her image? Listen, Polo, I'm going to I'm gonna have to call out your hypocrisy here. You said Jennifer Hudson should have known better about Carmen, who is uh -oh. simply just a womanizer. She should have yeah. known better. She shouldn't have got involved. And now you're saying <laughs> Carisha ain't know no better. Bullshit. Bullshit. Carisha knew Diddy has always been accused the same way Robert. Robert has always been accused. Not Robert. Sex crimes. Our yeah. has been infinite. I know you're about. Over the course of two to three decades, both of them have been since the 1900s. Okay? <laughs> since the 1990-somethings. Both of yeah. them have been infamously accused of a string of sex crimes. Did it ever make it? Now, I was really I was really impressed or really astonished. Like, oh, really? Finally, they're taking the black people? Because black people have been talking about R. Kelly and Rob uh, um, and, and P. Diddy being sex, uh, you know, being accused. For a long time. Yeah, and they've been ignoring them. They've this been was the first week. It yeah. made it to CNN. It made it to ABC. It made, oh, the, oh, the house being raided by Homeland Security. Oh, let's cover this. We've been telling y'all they be taking advantage of predominantly young black whatever. But I guess that, they yeah. also if they were taking they, advantage that wasn't of no young normal raid. Right. If that wasn't no normal raid, they came in with a tactical team like a court CNN had to kick exactly. that. Exactly, but that it was, was a base. It was based on three decades worth of speculation that's also been backed up by some facts and some testimony right. of people who have actually been a part. They didn't even cover it when Cassie came out with it, CNN and ABC. Right. They kind of didn't want no parts, like they didn't want to bother. But when Homeland Security, it was like, okay, this is salacious enough that we can cover it. But I guarantee you, if most of Diddy's victims had blonde hair and blue eyes. Okay, tell oh, them. He would have he would have been gone a long time ago. A long time yes. ago. And so, no, what I was saying was, it's like, like you said, Diddy is somebody who's been in this industry for 20, 30 years at this point. Young Miami is like, honestly, the dumb one out the hood who just made it. She like, oh, you're giving me 250K just to do this? Bet I'm doing it. Not even realize the magnitude of what she's doing. What does even, it mean so to be a city? What does it mean to be a city girl? She, you know, she's okay <laughs> with that that the, the hood niggas and the scammers and the drug dealers. Of course, like of course she knew everything, and of course she was down. This is the nature of where she's from. No, she was she knew. J she was down. Time for being a scammer, she like they're really the about this. So why are we surprised? Like yeah, that's what our brand is about. We just didn't no, know it would crumble. It's, it's no giving her the benefit of the doubt, especially because with the city girls being who they are, how many mugshots of JT had like they scam, and you know when you scam or when yeah. you're the sugar daddy of any, there is something that you have to sacrifice for. Mm -hmm. That come yeah. up, that come up ain't just based on your talent. It's oh, I'm getting the sugar daddy, or I'm going over here, or I'm so you understand that you've given something, it might be being degraded in public, in private, attaching yourself to somebody. We seen the interview that she did on her podcast with Diddy when he was basically like, Real bad. Yeah, no, I just deal with you, but I'm messing with other women. And she was yeah. like, oh, but we go together real bad. Like, so she right. knew she was compromising and sacrificing a lot in order to get the come up. The, she was social climbing. But and, and is she was. Was not the only woman like, who would entertain a drug oh, dealer. First of all, it'd be the most innocent looking women. And let me tell you, the benefit of dating a drug dealer, when you ask them for something, they don't make you wait till Friday. They can get it right there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look, we know what's going on. You know, um, if you're just getting in the room, by the way, please know that we do have some exclusive information from somebody within the label. We definitely want to wait until things play out a little more in the media. We don't want to say that anybody over here at Unwind is the new T or Unwind Studios or Tasha K is the reason for this man, you know, being found guilty of anything. But just know that we have some exclusive information from inside the label from one of his artists and Tasha K will be coming to you guys.
guys with that in a few weeks with, you know, maybe two or three. We just got to let some stuff play out. But we need you guys to get on over here to Wine is the New Tea every Tuesday and Thursday. We need you guys to watch it on your lunch break. Have watch parties like comment subscribe and share so that we can drop the gems that you guys are looking for now still more on this diddy there's been rumored for whoo this stuff is heavy it's rumored audio that has leaked yeah of alleged sexual intercourse between meek mm -hmm. mill and <laughs> diddy uh, I'm going to let my producers decide if they want to play that audio, but I would like to get into a discussion about if you guys think it's real. <laughs> I think, he said, you going to play audio? I just want to know, have you I heard think, it first? I, I don't think it's real. However, the one that we hear, I don't think it's real. But I do think that there is one out there. I Ever since i seen Meek Mill and Diddy in them twin outfits, I can't let it go. I don't know too many men, unless they twins, who's walking around in the same outfits at the parties late night. Y'all the only two there. I can't. So I do think that they have some type of sexual or intimate type of relationship going on. I definitely believe that 100%. But I don't think that sound that we heard is the real video. No, I don't think so. Jane, have you heard said media? I have not, but I can say this. I feel like there's either one or two things going on that I think is going on, not fact. I think that either it, it did happen and, and, and Meek Mill is terribly embarrassed or just feeling humiliated mm -hmm. um, about it, or Meek Mill is as slow as we think he is. He is? <laughs> or he is. he's just like that slow. So him being in the he's slow. And P did being like, oh, daddy, oh, daddy. And Meek Mill just taking it because you, I, I, I don't know if you've ever seen a story where somebody takes advantage of somebody that has like a delayed thought process. I'm trying to say it in the most respectful way. Tom. Yeah, but it's I right. feel like, That's I feel what like I'm saying about your body. Is a little slow. And so it either happened yeah. or he realized he could use this type of language that is going to fly under most people's radar. At least it was before our list blew up of the whole right. daddy thing. And he knew it would fly under most people's radar and um meek mill just he accepted that type of language because he just didn't i guess maybe he just thought it was a part of he he did he might have known he was slow and I, I meek mill sometimes he, if you ever just read his tweets and try to reread them or almost have a stroke or a seizure when reading them because they don't make sense i'd be like is he slow <laughs> like I, I i wonder honestly is he a little slow so I don't know, maybe Diddy seen that and capitalized off of that in a way that went as far as what the public is assuming or in a way to just use suggestive language around him yeah. to give off what he gives off for the other people that he actually does commit these alleged sexual deviant acts with. Yeah, and here, I want to ask you guys a question. Um, Paula, I'm going to open up with you and then play this, Jane. I, I want to hear your thoughts. Paula, I know you work in media entertainment very heavily, so I, I want to ask you first. Do you think this whole... Um, initiation, it said that, you know, uh, everybody that works with him has to have a fanny pack. And then when you start seeing them painting their nails, giving extravagant gifts like Drake gave Diddy, you know, that means that they are into a secret society. And then you also hear um, a lot of talk about the higher ups, the boule, whatever have you. Um, do you think a lot of this stuff is necessary to reach a certain level of success in the entertainment industry? Or are we starting to find out that just like people that go to the college and they feel the need to join a fraternity to find friends, and then some people don't do that and they just end up getting lit anyway? Are we finding out that everybody that felt like they had to get down with this stuff is just uh, actually now a Hollywood lame and it was not necessary and the joke is now on them? What do you think, Polo? Um, I think that unfortunately, um, that yes, a lot of people do have to sacrifice that in order to get what they want in this here industry. Um, and the only reason why is honestly not because they have to, it's because the people who are ahead like Diddy, they have the money, they have the influence, they have everything you want. This is what mm -hmm. they want. So they're using that, making you feel like you have to do this. So like what you just said, like they start off wearing the fanny packs. And then they start getting the gifts and they, okay, did it, you know, the the person now has a crush on you. 
So now they're trying to lavish you in gifts and make you feel like it starts with that. And then it goes into a little bit more. Before you know it, you probably bent over somewhere doing something you never thought you would do for the talk show that you've been wanting your whole life. And it happens a lot in this industry. It, it absolutely does, regardless if they say it or if they don't. It happens a lot to men and women, literally. Hmm. What are your thoughts, Jay? Do you think that uh, people need to make certain sacrifices, go through humiliation rituals, uh, find themselves in sexual situations that they, you know, definitely didn't dream of being in coming coming up in the game? Do you think all of this is necessary for success in the entertainment industry? Do I think it's necessary? No. Do I think that sometimes it happens because people feel like they have no other choice? Absolutely. I think that because we have a lack of... Um, of media training and in, in our present day artists, a lot of times they do feel like they don't have another choice. They realize their talent isn't enough to be like, you know what? I can separate from this label and I don't have to tolerate that. He just offered to bend me over the couch and to walk around the lingerie. I'm going to say no. And hopefully I can go to another record, a, a label and make it. Um, I feel like sometimes people struggle with that thought process because they realize that they aren't as talented. Like the, the talent really don't mm. care. It's really about look, about the marketing and, and what the machine that your team is putting behind you. Do I think Ice Spice got a couple bops? Absolutely. She got a couple things that are very catchy. But does she have media training and real? Has she put in any real work to have this level of hyper visibility? No. So sometimes I think because we live in a microwave society, they want fast results. And sometimes instead of working it out and really making the mistakes and going about what a real artist will go through to really train themselves up, they want instantaneous gratification. And no. so they might find themselves folded into some of the humiliating um, acts, private or public, in order to make it to the next level. Sadly, uh, because, you know, people abuse power at the end of the day. Yeah. Some yes. people might think that this, if you've never been in the entertainment industry and you make it to a point where you feel like you might be the next usher or you're you're an R&B artist or whatever. And this is the only funnel that you've seen towards a certain area. And they, well, I want you to walk around for me, daddy. Well, I, and you, yeah. your family might be poor, you know, whatever. Who know what, what thought might go into you actually subjecting yourself to and that you got to tell and didn't know it's happened to me a couple of times so I, it, it literally has happened uh, would to you me care a couple to give times. us more uh details do you care to elaborate <laughs> on times that you feel that you have been uh potentially violated or they tried it no no no, no. there has been times for sure you know like i've had opportunities and um i won't say any names but i've had opportunities from a big network owner and a uh, one of the biggest fashion designers out there. And uh, the fashion designer, like I had an opportunity to come host the whole fashion show and it was a whole vibe. Like it was a whole weekend full of events. And um, I was getting texted in the middle of the night randomly, like the night before, like send me some pictures. So I sent regular photos thinking that's going to make a flyer. And he's like, no, send no, me some pictures. He's like, no, send me some pictures under the clothes. And so I was like, you know, I'm not cool with that. Like, I don't, I'm big on like that. Like, my career is not going to be built on that. No one is going to be able to say they they have this over my head. So as soon as my energy shift, like, switched, and I'm like, not with that, the next morning I was told that they didn't need me anymore. Um, they had a replacement already, and Ooh, I never yo, got they, that. They moved swiftly. You saw how they did Jamie Foxx. Yeah, when he quickly. Moved. And the same thing with the, same thing with the network head. I was supposed to have a whole show, and because I found out that, you know, this guy was literally trying to groom me in a sense, literally, like trying to groom me in a sense, um, to the point to where normally I would have my own hotel room. He had a share hotel room before, and in the hotel room, he confessed his whole love to me, told me that he wanted to have sex. When he walked out the hotel room, I went... I'm sorry, I'm nosy. I went through his bag. <laughs> he had this in there. He had Lou. Everything you everything. I was like, whoa, you were playing, you were ready. And I left. I was gone. He On the had the Lou in there? He had everything. Guess what? I was gone. He was blowing me up like, Cute. where were you at? Where did you go? Where did you go? And I never seen him again after that. I was so shocked and uncomfortable. Think about I being in the hotel. Was. Think about being in the hotel room and, and this person is like, I want Now you. he came with materials and supplies. 
I can't <laughs> at all. So yes, it happens. It happens. And I'm a media journalist and it's happening to me. So imagine the singers, the rappers, the actors, the models. Yes, this shit is real and it happens. Literally. So Jane, Polo mentioning how he saw that the man came in supplies. He found lube. He found rope. You know, he found flashlights. You know, that makes me wonder. When they raided that house, Jane, can you name three things that you think that Homeland Security found in Diddy's home during the raid? And then, Polo, I'm going to ask you next. Um, I feel like they definitely had a bottle of white nail polish. Oh, period. That was all up and through the documents that came out last year. All right. That's his preference. He like, he wants he wants the women workers to have white nails. There's a freak off around the corner, ain't it? If you got on the white nails. You know what? And it's I typically wear white. That's so crazy. I don't got it on right now. Thank goodness. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. But it's anyway, on right I, now. I just no, I don't got it on white now. But I usually oh. white is my favorite color to wear. I'm just trying something different, right? Anyway. Yeah. Um, okay, so nail polish, I think I'm sorry, I think he had some different type of straps too. Absolutely. Um, and hopefully he had a good lubricant, not like Astro Glide. Hopefully Astro Glide is amazing. Uh, Astro Glide be getting hot. Yeah, that's the, that's the bad one. And it's sick. <laughs> KY Liquid is better. Okay, you, I'm going to write that down. I, I don't know nothing about nothing. I'm, I just, I just, you know, I'm just saying you know, hey, well, like with you know, um, is uh definitely better than Astro Glide. Astro Glide, you can like buy that at Hot Topic with the 999 dildo. Like, yeah. you, just, you gotta take it to different levels of uh realistic. Okay, I'm gonna step my stuff up. Thank you, Jane. Uh, <laughs> realistic moisture and, and wetness. You know, you oh. got to get it because Astro Glide is it's not it's not realistic pertaining. Yeah. No, but uh, no. yo, the, the, those are things that I think he found, and uh, definitely. Well, I already named three, but I, I think some either some incriminating keep it going. photos, VHSs, um, and he might even have tokens from each person. You know how sometimes when people are serial offenders, they keep a token. It could be um, a phone, a quarter, a piece of hair, a drop. Of, I, 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 I don't saying I, 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 the dead are is doing voodoo. A watch? No, it no, it don't have anything. To do. People like to remember who they offend. I watch a lot of serial killer stuff, so they could have took like a watch <laughs> or a bracelet. Could it be a pair of panties from or boxers in his case, maybe? Uh, so yeah, he might be if he's a serial offender. <laughs> I could see him trying to take a token from each one. If he had, all right, let me not. And that's a kind of. Joke. <laughs> um, you know, they said that Diddy has. Uh, dildos in all the guest restrooms. Every restroom is the dildo in the restroom. Yes. So that's, that's they said they went to the restroom and they picked the dildo. I'm like, who's is this? They said these party favors. They got the dildos as party favors in the restrooms. Yeah, I could definitely see Diddy sniffing some boxers from 1996. <laughs> Diddy <laughs> probably got a whole uh, fetish of, of cross dressing. He probably got all kind of women's clothes in there, panties, dildos, everything that a woman. Got he probably got it. <laughs> I guarantee you. It just seems like he likes to engage in the humiliation kink in, in every yeah. like y'all remember making a band where he made him walk for cheesecake and how he was talking and then that was abuse in plain sight. I was just thinking about that. He just like he enjoys humiliating people. So I definitely feel like he might have some stuff left over from his collection of however many people he has. You know, been a, a, a you know humiliating or abusive towards allegedly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and, any and, more things you think Homeland yeah, Security found that they weren't I looking just, for? To add, say one more time. I say anything else that you think Homeland Security might have found during the Diddy race that they weren't <laughs> looking for. Um, I think they de and you know what? I think they found some type of tapes. Definitely. I don't know why these people do this illegal stuff, record it, and then keep the tapes for decades. And not only do you keep them, you keep them right where you're sleeping at. Right where they, they know where to come. You got all the evidence they need. All they wanted was the electronics. They said they're looking for the sex tapes. And I guarantee you, they found it all because they all are dummies and they do the same thing every time. If you're going to do illegal stuff, I'm not saying do it. But if you're going to do it, be smart about it. Don't freaking record it and then keep it and keep it in your house at that. 
knowing that it's it's been said often that this is what you're doing. That's yeah. why it's like I don't understand. R. Kelly had about five trials over the same thing, and you still had all the tapes. Why? <laughs> I don't understand. And it. the fact that he called Wack to speak on Diddy and his support is just like y'all. I would have been like, please be don't call me next to each other. <laughs> That's the last call he needs right now. That makes the case look worse. <laughs> why they do that stuff? That's so like that's that's in a form of them abusing the power. They've yeah. been doing it for so long in plain sight. All they did was shuffle one point two million dollars to the best Jewish lawyer they mm. could find that yeah. knew was gonna get them off for stuff that actually happened. So they they thought that their level of power and where they were, they would always have enough money to pay for that problem to go away. They never thought the day would come where they would actually be being held accountable. It would be this much of a public spectacle. They'd be forced in the civil, facing the civil trials and facing the criminal trial. They never thought that day would come because they thought they were too rich and they were exempt Why? from that. Because they paid for it to go away two, three, four, five, seven times before. Listen. So what would make them think if they're if if they've got thirty million dollars that they don't have enough money to pay? Because them? life goes in circles. What you do will come back to you. I don't Ab know why people absolutely. think they're exempt from that. Absolutely. And did he? You if you just run back all his music. Everything is heavy on the, the you can't stop me, you can't hold me down, can't nobody take my pride, can't stop, won't stop. He really felt like he was untouchable. That's why even Young Miami, the, the hardest bar she ever felt when she got you because she felt that shit. I'll never snitch on you, daddy. I'll hold a brick like these guys be saying what yeah. is, you know, like what their whole agenda is. That's why you felt that stuff. You know, also her being in the same category as sex workers with 50 cents baby mama, Daphne Joy. This is how we get to, you know, the meat of what the Diddy and 50 cent beef right might be right now. Uh, what are your thoughts about 50 cents baby mama being wrapped up in all of this? Uh, again, I know it has everything to do with his quest for power and hunger, but what are your thoughts? Because at the end of the day, this is a little boy's mother. The same right. with Miami. You know, what are, what are right. your thoughts, Paulo? I mean, well, she thinks that uh, 50 Cent Baby Mom, she feels as if she's the head honcho anyways. She has been around for a while. She's the one who was getting into it with Young Miami a couple of years ago. So she definitely feels as if she's the head honcho. So I can see why um, she would be one to make sure she's getting her monthly check. Whatever she got to do, she needs the monthly check and all the Birkins he buys. And that's just that. Um, I think when it comes to Young Miami, she took what she could get. Hey, you say you're going to pay me 250 k I'm hot right now. You want me to be on your arm? That's just what that is. Other girl, I believe, it's like y'all said, Can it's a humiliation. Can you be on somebody's arm without being a sex worker or no? No, not, not for $250,000 a month. You cannot. You're going to open that twat up. And like he said, can't stop, won't stop, whenever he wants to. And that's just what it is. And so, you know, when it comes to the, the baby mom, she used to it. She's been dealing with Diddy for years now, before Young Miami even came around. So they say it'd be a, they be pooping in the mouths over there and everything. So, hey, all the little kinks they have going on over there, she's used to it. Get sent her the deposit. That's all she care about. And 50 yeah. Cent is not shocked. He yeah, knows okay. that. He's not he, shocked. He, he, he was waiting on us to find out, right? Exactly. He is not shocked. Not even a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, I know that, you know, you might think that, you know, as a mother, you might be thinking, okay, you get in the bag and you can provide for your kids, but then it, you come out of all of this listed as a sex worker. What are your thoughts about not just Miami, but Daphne Joy and 50 Cent's baby mother being listed, wrapped up in the sex trafficking case as an actual sex worker? If it's true, I don't got no feelings about it. And also, I'm not shocked when Carisha came out and told us publicly, yeah, I like to get peed on. Yeah. <laughs> and you're yeah. in a relationship with Diddy and we've heard all that we've heard about Diddy. It's like, oh, you you peeing on Diddy for money and for a podcast. Because, like, how uh -oh. did you how did you like pop up and, and get a, a podcast that got a award that's only been out for a year, that's only got six, seven, eight episodes, and you yeah. getting awards over people who've been putting in work for years, nearly dec a, a decade. Like, this doesn't make sense. Diddy owns Revolt. You're getting certain awards. You have increased visibility. You pay the price for that. And you pay price behind closed doors. And then you're telling us you like to be, you like golden showers. I'm not surprised. 
I, yeah. I, I'm not surprised that you popped up there. Um, you know, Diddy's post about his baby mama was crazy. It said, now she listed as a sex worker. You little sex worker. You little sex I'm worker. Like, I, 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 so I a menace. He no is, who it is such a menace. Look, he gonna be pissed. She gonna be dropping the baby off. He gonna be sex work. I'm like, you he know what? Petty. But I mean, if we think about the definition of a sex worker, you're exchanging sex for products, goods, or services for some. So whether it's an actual two hundred fifty thousand dollar allowance, whether it's to get a podcast in exchange, it's exchanging sex for some sort of resource yeah. for some sort of benefit. So if you're gonna be technical. But where is where is the line between the day to day of a woman dealing with a man and sex worker? Because you know I can't lie, even looking at this whole situation, it got me questioning. Well, am I a sex worker? Right. I love my man. <laughs> I don't stuff the you know, company take care of me. Like what? Amount. What's the difference? I don't. Once you, once you get to a certain amount, it's like you know, okay, if, if you go out to dinner at an expensive spot. You know, and the dinner is $150 a night, and you go out to dinner three times with him, and do you do something? Okay. But if he's turning around and buying you a Ferrari, and you know he expects you to bend that thing over in the bedroom, it's like, that's kind of, that's. And I'm bend it over, too. That's why I had to question Ferrari you a Ferrari? Yeah. Like, you know, that I'm already dealing with, and now he up in the gifts? Yeah. Right. And that's, and so I don't really necessarily think it's a. I don't think it's a sex worker. I think it's do what I say. Do whatever I say. That's what I think it is. I think he just wants to have that control. As long as he has, how much is it to control you? If I want you to pick up the pink Coke and bring it to me overseas, risk your, risk your life and your career and mm -hmm. do that for me. If I say drop the kids and come to me right now to the Love Island, do that. And mm -hmm. I think that is the type and of relationship. She's she just holding her man down. Yeah, her. little does she know. Now you're going to be looking at charges. Not little do she know. She's a grown ass woman <laughs> smuggling drugs and getting peed on for a podcast. <laughs> no one gives her the benefit of the doubt. She knew this is a professional scammer. Hello. <laughs> Scammers find people who they can perform sexual acts for. This old man is 80. He about to sign over this will to me or he about to, when he yeah, calls, absolutely. I'm about to get $500,000 or they know they are exchanging certain goods and services, whether they be illicit or sexual deviant acts or you know just giving them they know what it is they they are no fool now see they see y'all giving them the benefit of the doubt is what helps them get away with it because they like yeah. i just thought i was spending time with grandpa you're 23. i'm crying not hey. grandpa <laughs> like he's he's 80 you know Yo. what you are doing to mr limp that and you know that he desires this more than anything and and it, it takes work to do something that you wouldn't typically engage in without a price tag you are working to get these assets and most of that work is sex it's yeah. it's it's intimacy it's telling him what he want to hear any 80 year old man wants to hear you so fine daddy i only got eyes for you and from a 23 year old that ain't realistic right. you're I, lying I you're lying you're, lying. Like you're working right. you're an in-person sex phone operator like you you're working in person and even about to get physical with it because you know what's about to come with it which is a huge bag like yeah. at the end of the day it's just glorified sex worker and 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 that's what her music and that's what the city girls music is about and you know, some people have normalized it, and other people want to continue to dumb it down. Mm -hmm. Oh, she didn't know what she was signing up for. Bullshit. If R. Kelly was released today and a grown woman, Carisha Age, got with R. Kelly, will we give her the benefit of the doubt? Or will no. we say, girl, you ain't seen or heard all that's been said? And, like, this is what he's about. Like, no, this is a grown woman. Now, a 13 year old, different, right? But a grown ass yeah. woman over 20, like that's why I have no, I have no, not that I don't feel bad for Carisha, but mm. I feel bad for all of R. Kelly's underage victims. But he had one victim who was 33 years old who was a radio DJ. I don't, there's no, you report on what he's accused of all right. the time. You know. You know. So like I, I <laughs> I can't, I can't really lend that benefit of the doubt to you. Yeah. No. Portia even said in her book that she was about to be one of the victims and then she was sitting on the bed waiting while he had women in the other room. And like, even though she got up out of there, still she admitted to sitting on the bed waiting while he did 
their whatever he had to do with other women in other rooms and so that just you know leads to show that like a lot of these women are a lot more conscious and even you know unpopular opinion uh, i'm good at what i want to do uh regardless so i can just you know speak my truth uh, even with the bill cosby thing where he might have had a lot of wrongs i do feel like a lot of these women have this ulterior motive and then if the 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 story does not play out how they want to they don't reach this certain level of fame you know then they become a victim you know what i'm saying but had they made it had they blew up had they want like they wanted to i think a lot of these people you know would have been quiet um polo mm -hmm. i have a question um especially when she started so, talking about um you know uh podcasts <laughs> and, and and things like that um talk shows uh with the events that have transpired with Diddy, um, all the the levels um, of this story, this unfolding, um, and on top of a lot of other things we've seen in the media, um, you know, from Diddy to Cardi B, whatever else yeah. is going <laughs> on, um, and even just taking um, on this job, joining the show like you all have, I've heard a lot, especially living in LA, where first of all, people that ain't even that important come to me like, hey, you're not going to tell Tasha none of my business. Y'all not going to talk about uh, none of my business on the show. Like, first of all, Eddie Winslow, don't nobody care about what you no got going on. You. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we not, like, you don't, like, I find that, I'm finding so many people are just, like, so self-centered and conceited, like, thinking we're about to talk about them. But with Tasha, there are a lot of people that have been in an uproar about the type of news that she reports. First yeah. of all, when we let the years play out, she's pretty much always spot on breaking yeah. the stuff early and as many people that are upset and bewildered in an uproar about the type of news that tasha breaks you're starting to find out that those people are down with evil activities so right. to go against tasha and her news that she reports is kind of signing up uh to be in cahoots with people with evil practices. The only people that got problems with what Tasha and what we do over here at this channel are people that don't want you to talk about the right. way, the truth, and the life. Polo, as somebody who runs a media outlet, you know, what are your thoughts about, <laughs> you know, uh, Tasha K, her channel, the type of uh, news that's reported, and how these things always unfold to be true? Yeah, I think when it comes to the type of news that, you know, Tasha K reports and the things that we are doing as well, um, I think that the people don't like it because we're reporting it real, raw and real. We're not beating around the bush. If you're wrong, we're telling you you're wrong. And we're laying all the facts out on the table. And a lot of people don't like that. You know, they like things coddled and, and they like it done in a, in a nicer way to make it not look like what it is. But over here... We laying it out like what it is. And a lot of people don't like that, which is why, you know, as far as me, it's called like literally unbiased news. Um, you know, people want you to be unbiased until it's them, you know, for the most part. Like, just like you said, since even since I've been on this show, I've had people come to me like, like you said, you're not going to talk about me. Don't bring me up. Or don't, like, why would I want to talk about you if you don't give me nothing to talk about? I won't talk about you. That part. If you not, <laughs> like, thank you. <laughs> like and that's the problem they need to stop giving us stuff to talk about and we won't even be here talking about it at all but yeah i think people are going to continue to talk i think clearly what tasha has has done and has built there is the audience for it there's a, a team of contributors who want to speak on this platform as well and we, it's not going to stop y'all and so and just like they're not going to stop doing what they're doing we are not going to stop talking about it <laughs> at all. <laughs> and I deal with that a lot on my blog, too. People want me to be biased. I get threats from celebrities all the time. We're not being biased. Don't do it if you don't want me to talk about it. Because all I'm doing is talking about what you're giving me. Mm -hmm. Jane, what are your thoughts about, you know, uh, first of all, people just being so conceited and everybody assuming that you're going to discuss them when you most likely are not. <laughs> but... <laughs> But also, you know, just the type of news that we report over here and how it always unfolds to be facts. What are your thoughts? You know, I think that there is something commendable about um, folks who stand in their quote unquote mess. And, you know, one thing about it, you have people that work for WJZ or WBAR 13, and they have a certain requirement to have a completely straight posture and use certain vernacular and verbiage. They're not allowed to be a bit more um, 
you know, urban or mm, I don't want to say African American, like really speak on, like on some real stuff, like the way we talking, like we're not talking like news reporters. It doesn't it's make how everybody talk in real life you know? anyway. So you know? people get tired of the super stiff media representation when it comes to black topics, because sometimes it misses the mark. But a lot of times people don't really give us the respect that we deserve as YouTubers. One thing about Tasha, you've got messy bloggers and YouTubers and you got people who don't necessarily want to label themselves as messy and they they do it. Tasha stands in her stuff. She doesn't mince her words. If she's going to come at somebody or talk about a certain topic, she's she going to so come out about me. it. But when it comes to black media and us on YouTube, we don't get nearly as much credit, but we be setting a lot of trends. Prime example, when Kevin Samuels passed away, we blew that story up. It took TMZ about five days, almost a week to report on it. It wasn't until they saw smaller black platforms. Oh, look, look at these black people getting a million views on this video, 500,000 on this video, this talking about Kevin Samuels. Well, let's look up a death certificate. Oh shit. It's real. Let's report on it. Mm -hmm. We keep blowing up certain stories and certain things and really providing a different creative and of course a humorous edge. Cause you know, even if it is about something serious, we black Twitter adjacent publications, we gonna find a way to make something funny about it. Like I covered the R. Kelly trial and I told hella jokes, but that wasn't to take away from the assault because it wasn't jokes about the assaults. But no. I still, because it was a heavy subject, I had to mix in a bit of comedy in order to make it easier for Stop people to blow. Who, Top, you know, to make it more palatable. So mm -hmm. we don't be getting the respect that we deserve over here, and that's why it's important that we. Um, lift one another up that we are grateful for Tasha for letting us grace her platform once or more than one time um, in order to share our perspectives, either when she wasn't isn't available or if she's just trying to, you know, let her audience know who are the other indie um, platforms, you know, that exist. We don't get enough credit. So we got to make sure that we give ourselves that reassurance that we are just as valuable black platforms. Amen yes. to that. Yes, well, well said, Jane. Right, so we're going to get into uh, one more commercial break, and then our guest hosts are going to tell you guys where did you, you can find us and our next project's coming up, and then we're going to see you back here next Tuesday. Brown's Blinos. Yeah. Okay, Miss Tina Brown. Tina Brown. Okay, Shane Brown. You ready? Yeah, ready. Now, I ain't going to lie. Like, I love Bobby Brown. You and Bobby, how close were y'all? Very close. What was it like living with Whitney? It was fun. You smoke crack with Whitney, you said? That's Absolutely. pretty. Absolutely. You don't know that. We only know Bobby and Whitney. Girl. And every time he sitting down, he talking about Whitney. And I'm like, how as a new wife do you deal with this? Like, That's why I hit that bitch with the bottle. And it dwindled down to, it dwindled down. you know, some people that dwindled down to my brother touching three of my toys. Who? Bobby? Yes. Sure, but yes. But, you know. Yes. I'm, 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 just, sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't hold it no more. shows like this and would like to see more with me on stage in your city well i'm coming tickets on sale right now link in the description box as well as the bio hurry up now while tickets last okay <laughs> if you enjoyed that clip you can check out more Ooh. interviews like that over on tashaklive.com also on her app she's also coming to you guys with some fresh streaming content so please get on over there and check that out also april 14th Baltimore Comedy Club, our girl Tasha K continues blazing the comedy world on tour. You can catch her over there again. Baltimore Comedy Club, doors open at 7, show starts at 8 o'clock. Um, Jane, hopefully you can pull up on our girl, you know what I'm saying, show her some love. Again, you can check out more tour dates. If you're nowhere near Baltimore, don't worry, she is literally on tour it's giving beyonce she's hitting every place in the country okay she's gonna be over here on the west coast later in april so again get over to tasha k on stage.com and um you know check out her dates and go support our girl um polo g we're gonna wrap the show can you tell them where they can find you yes absolutely you guys can find me on instagram at 
Yeah, it's Polo. Or you can follow my blog, The Uncut, at The Uncut with two T's and an underscore. Um, you can also follow our YouTube channel at The Uncut with two T's, T-H-E-U-N-C-U-T-T. And I had a great time with y'all today. Oh, we always enjoy you, honey. You yeah, always yeah, yeah, come yeah. through drippy with the beautiful <laughs> smile. And I definitely look forward to seeing you again. Plain yeah, as Jane, absolutely. can you tell the people where they can find you? Uh, you'll be able to find me on my channel. I have titled titled my name right here, The Plainest Jane. You can find me over there. We sip syrup. We ride the bus talking about the best of Black news, celebrity entertainment, slash controversy, celebrity updates, and also realistic like Black news that's going on on a local front, not just like here in my city with the bridge, but other local news things that are going on all throughout the world. So a nice blend of celebrity and real world news and entertainment. That's what we get into over there. It's the syrup over there. It's the wine over here with the winos. It's nice to talk and see some people who are winos and stickies over here in the chat, dropping the pancakes and the wine glasses. It's dope. But that's what we get into over on my channel. Jane, we have more than enjoyed you and your insight. I definitely look forward to seeing you again. Um, as you all know, or if you're just getting in the room again, we do have an exclusive from inside the Love Records Diddy Camp. Uh, we want to wait a few more episodes and let, you know, things play out as far as the conviction in real life before Tasha drops that news on you all. And what a bombshell it is. You do have to get on over here every Tuesday and Thursday so you can make sure you check it. We come to you live at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Wine is the new tea and everything else is available on the Wine Unwind with Tasha K channel. You know, winos unite. Let's go. Uh, tonight, if you are in the Los Angeles area, our very last episode of Wine is the New Tea that we did on Tuesday went very well. The Wayans Camp definitely watched it. Uh, they appreciated us giving positive insight. And so because of that, I have been invited to enjoy um, and join Shantae Wayans tonight at Soho House, West Hollywood. So if you are a member or you would like to be present, you have to contact me at I am the Ashley and get on the guest list. Tonight, I will be performing with Shantae Wayans at Soho House, West Hollywood. Um, you can come check us out again on Tuesday, 12 p.m. Pacific time on all of Tasha K's platform. We're gonna keep, you know, keep you up to breast on this Diddy saga. And uh, yeah, see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.